welcome back to the series of lectures on uh, English language and literature. As you are aware, these lectures are being brought to you by NPTEL, the National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. And these are brought to you by the Indian Institutes of Technology and the Indian Institute of Science. Our course is entitled English Language and Literature and we are in the second lecture of this series. Uh, in the first lecture, um, well let us do a recap. In the first lecture, uh, we began by talking about the aims okay, and the scope of our course. Okay. Uh, as declared in our web uh, in uh, on the course uh, syllabus in the website, this course seeks to impart in both a compact and comprehensive manner the necessary knowledge in English language and literature that an undergraduate student should possess. The course aims to help students understand English language and literature using a multifaceted methodology that includes the historical, the linguistic, literary and the critical dimensions. Right? So, we also um, looked uh, in detail at uh, you know the course structure and we found that in the first module, we talk about um, a certain you know newer issues that have come up. For instance, we uh, as today's lecture as in today's lecture for instance, which is devoted to the scope of English studies. Uh, then uh, for instance, international English, the globalization of English, the rise of cultural studies and how it has impacted the study of English language and literature, how it uh, sort of um, was partly responsible in uh, the rise of what today we call English studies. Right? Then we saw that in the second module, uh, we are going to talk lar largely about um, language and particularly the history of uh, the English language and which we divided into old English, middle English, early modern English, modern English and ending with English in India. Then we have, uh, we saw that in the third module, we would uh, talk about the different, you know the, the so called periods or the different ages in English. Um, in the history of English literature. Okay. So, the previous module was on the history of English language. The third module <coughs> excuse me, uh, would talk about English literature in its different phases or in its, different, in its different ages or periods. For instance, we talk about the age of Chaucer, that of Milton, um, the, uh, the, the Augustans, uh, Victorian English and ending again with Indian writing in English. Further, we saw that the next module is uh, devoted, module 4 is devoted uh, exclusively to genres and in which we talk about uh, you know certain aspects and certain key, key important works uh, as far as uh, for instance the novel is concerned as far as poetry, um, autobiography uh, etcetera are concerned. And finally, we move on to um, a uh, pretty detailed discussion okay, of another important aspect of the study of English language and literature and of English studies and the this is the you know uh, um, uh, this is the various critical approaches that are there in the study of literary and language texts and uh, among them the important one you know we have tried to sort of you know talk about as many as possible this of course is again not, uh, as I said in the last lecture not an exhaustive list and we talk about new historicism, Marxism, feminism, eco criticism, post uh, colonialism, cognitivism etcetera. Okay. So, we, uh, we found in the last lecture that um, our effort has been to uh, talk um, about the study of English language and literature and what goes on uh, you know in the different uh, approaches to the study of English language and literature uh, and we have tried to make it as varied uh, as possible. Um, by no means of course, is this is, uh, is this the course, uh, this is uh, also not really English 101. Okay, there is more packed into this and uh, in certain cases we may or we you may have 
say uh, electives say only on something like this uh, say you know on uh, English theory uh, literary theory sorry and literary criticism for instance you could have a whole course um, an elective course on the novel for instance okay so we what we have done uh, professor krishna borwa and uh, i we have tried to sort of give you uh, as far as possible okay an idea at least okay uh, so that you are aware of the various ways or various things that entail in the touch in the teaching of english language and literature okay though this lecture the say lecture 2 is uh, devoted uh, to uh, you know showing you the aspects of what it is when we mean English studies uh, even though we did not really adopt that title for various reasons we kept it partly you know sort of traditional. Um, we move now to uh, the, the whole topic of English studies and the text here that you may want to look up uh, is for instance. Um, Smithson and Ruff's edited volume English Studies slash Culture Studies Institutionalizing Descent. Now, this very title of this book will give you an idea of what Engl how English studies really differs from you know um, English language and literature because there is this whole question of descent, this whole question of you know of you know revising the canon, revising what goes into English language and literature. Okay, and you see the presence of uh, culture studies. We have a whole lecture uh, in this module. I think it's the last lecture in this module uh, devoted to uh, the rise of cultural studies. Okay, so uh, English studies uh, uh, is impacted, so to speak, by the rise of culture studies or cultural studies with the rise of uh, ideology by the rise of you know uh, this um, impulse to revise okay uh, and this uh, uh, revise uh, the the curriculum revise the syllabus and this is also to do with uh, obviously the the spread of english language and literature beyond uh, you know uh, historically and contemporarily beyond the boundaries of uh, what is written okay and another book which is you know um, uh, both, both from the point of view of theory and practice is important here is rob pope's the english studies book okay it's like a handbook of uh, you know um, english studies and uh, the next i refer also uh, briefly of course to macaulay's uh, important minute on indian education because we also talk about English in India briefly though there is another lecture on English in India in the second module. <coughs> then uh, Gauri Vishwanathan's Masters of Conquest is something I refer to, but if you wish to have a resource uh, you know page uh, on uh, English uh, the history of English studies maybe you uh, would do well to go to uh, this website here mentioned here uh, by Rita uh, Rayleigh and in this uh, website okay, you have a number of uh, links that, uh, that take you to, to important texts okay, uh, that would show you both historically and theoretically. Okay, uh, uh, all, uh, you know, many of the debates that in here in uh, the studying and teaching of um, English studies, uh, not necessarily English language and literature. Okay. So, to set the record straight what I do here is, uh, uh, you will see when uh, you know by the end of this lecture that mean even though this course is not entitled English language and literature, uh, there are we've tried except perhaps you know the proficiency part of it, the skill part of it. We've tried to to uh, you know we talk about world Englishes, about world literature, uh, about you know uh, as much as well, you know as far as possible. So to give this uh, uh, this course that we are bringing to you uh, some sort of uh, you know to accommodate the English studies um, approach to it also. Okay. So, these are some of the texts as I said that you may want to look at. Now, so well this lecture is on the scope of English studies and again uh, there are many ways in which you can talk about the scope and within the um, constraints of a single 40 minute uh, or 50 minute lecture, uh, I know that it is not possible for me to talk about or to bring to you so many different aspects, but let me uh, say this. When you talk about the scope of English studies and really the scope is, uh, is growing, okay, it is becoming quite 
accommodating and commodious if you will, um, the scope of English studies first necessarily needs to refer to uh, the study of English literature. Okay. Look at this slide please, uh, it refers to literatures in English, English linguistics and English sociolinguistics in the sense that even though the you know the margins are being stretched so to speak even though there are so many other things that are being accommodated within this you know we will see you know a couple of comments that have been made for instance by Rob Pope you know about this whole the whole plurality of this exercise and uh, nevertheless you would uh, you cannot do without talking about these three core aspects okay in, uh, literatures in English. English linguistics and English sociolinguistics, right? Fine. So, the other some of the other areas at least that may come into uh, into the rubric of English studies uh, also uh, in uh, you know the, they include apart from the three main ones. Let us look at this slide please, uh, includes uh, the study of the use of English in journalism. Okay the study of philosophy of language in general and as applied okay, to the study of Engl the English language and its variations and developments. It definitely uh, includes the st study of literary theory and criticism. Then the issue of creative writing is again uh, a very important part of English studies um, if, you know as we go on studying the development. Uh, the creative development of the English language, its development, growth, and variation, as we see in um, uh, you know create in creative writing, okay, um, as English is being written increasingly by second language speakers or, pe or people who, who you know writers whose native um, languages or mother tongue uh, has not been English, okay. Similarly, in contemporary times, uh, another emerging area of study in the scope of English studies is the whole idea of uh, not traditional publishing, but publishing electronically, digital publishing. Okay? Uh, the question of electronic texts, for instance, is also another uh, the study of electronic texts and, and uh, all issues relating to publishing, including the political. Okay? Uh, these form an important part of contem at least contemporary English studies and film and media and communication. These are also important areas of studying um, uh, of, of, of you know of, of exploring English studies. So, what are let us quickly look at it again. What is the scope of English studies? The scope of English studies is first okay, the li literatures in English, English linguistics and English sociolinguistics in no particular order really here uh, and the others as we saw journalism for instance, uh, media and communication, film, creative writing, literary theory and criticism, study of aesthetics, the study of you know uh, the study of uh, various schools and approaches to the literary text. Okay. So, uh, if one is to summarize this is uh, these are some of uh, the things that you would talk about, but this again is not the whole story. Okay, uh, we need to uh, to we need to you know um, recognize uh, so many other aspects of the study of English as English studies, and as I had mentioned, which doesn't really fa uh, fall in our course. Okay, because. Um, uh, again, as we said, since we kept it English language and literature, we thought that uh, the study of proficiency, the whole issue of proficiency in uh, the um, you know in English uh, studies, um, and for instance, the use of uh, English for special purposes, right? Or uh, for instance, the uh, the use of English as um, <coughs> a second language, right? Uh, the, uh, these are certain issues, these have really become uh, a part of a huge area of study, okay, which is the teaching the Eng English language teaching, um, English again as I said English as a second language, English as a third language for instance and as far as the proficiency is concerned. Uh, NPTEL uh, has provided uh, there are uh, there are courses in, for instance, English uh, in communication skills, the courses on better English, etc. That you may take up, right? 
Now, uh, if you recall, I mentioned that uh, Rob Pope's handbook uh, on English studies is an important text both from uh, you know the theoretically and largely from the practical uh, points of view. There are several texts there that you that are you know um, are analyzed and it is really a rich book that I may and I'm, uh, and I, that I would recommend to you. Um, now, let us look at what Rob Pope says here you know Pope rightly points to what he you know calls the capacious subject matter. Okay, the capacious subject matter of English studies. That is, English studies uh, can ac uh, accommodate and continues to accommodate rather than English, you know, the old the English language, the more traditional English language and literature, okay, continues to be capacious, con continues to accommodate so many uh, so many areas, accommodate dissent, for instance, okay, and uh, accommodate revision revisions of uh, the new envisioning of syllabi and curriculum. Uh, second, he says that English studies also uh, looks at the pedagogy or you know um, education strategies, the science and art of teaching you know English language. It will question, it will critique, okay? it will critique and analyze the pedagogies that have been uh, that are that are established in the teaching of English language and literature with uh, a view to you know with a view to uh, revising and correcting some of uh, some of the what shall we say not really mistakes maybe <coughs> sorry some of the established tendencies in the pedagogy of English language and literature teaching right and third not the least of course he points to the tremendous interdisciplinarity of English studies and uh, I would hasten, uh, you know, hasten to say that this is something that you, you, you need to compare. However, compared to uh, English language and literature, we would say that this is English studies is um, far more interdisciplinary. Uh, it uh, it uh, is really um, you know talking about everything that uh, that is involved when you talk about uh, English, okay, not as a language, just as a language, uh, but in, you know uh, English in, in, in anything that entails sociolinguistics, for instance, right? Uh, what we call high theory, for you know, for instance, and <coughs> down to the skills, you know, down to the questions of proficiency, right? Now, this is again by Rob Pope, and I'm quoting from uh, his his handbook. Uh, he actually he plays on you know the he plays on this he plays on so he says let's when we talk about English studies he says English is a fundamentally plural and constantly changing series of subjects so the plurality and the dynamism okay of the English part of it. <clears throat> okay, so, English is a fundamentally plural and constantly changing series of subjects, it often turns out to be they. So, the study it is not in the singular, it is in the plural. Okay, so, English studies is studying English in plural ways, okay, studying taking into account and meeting uh, you know squaring up so to speak to his dynamism. and. In realizing this, we talk about English studies. It is in the same spirit that scholars, many scholars have begun to talk about Englishes, okay? where this Englishes becomes a legitimate term. So, we no longer talk about English. So, in the in similar spirit, right? we talk about Englishes as far as languages are concerned, in a more broad uh, uh, sense in a broader sense really English studies is uh, you know follows the same spirit of uh, you know un uh, uh, understanding and appreciating right recognizing the plurality inherent in it okay <coughs> now if uh, uh, if you, you know, the, the, the if you look at the history of the study of English you'll find that it's rather different from the kind uh, from the you know again the capaciousness of this subject as it exists today. Okay. So, if you go 
back to the England of the 19th century, you'll realize that the study of English, that when you say, for instance, when you say in, in India, for instance, say the Department of English, okay. So, when you say the Department of English, uh, what you expect first is, of course, that the department offers courses in English literature, right, and not necessarily in um, solely on English uh, on, on, on English language or you know or linguistics right. So, the first expectation is that there would be courses on Shakespeare, there would be courses on Chaucer, on uh, uh, you know on American English for instance on Indian English for instance right. But if you go back the interesting very interesting point is if you go back to the history you will find that up to okay, up to the 19th I mean as, as late in relatively speaking here as late as the 19th century, the study uh, of English in the universities in England uh, entailed not just the study of literature, but entailed studies uh, this happens more in you know uh, uh, in towards in the beginning of the departments study of oratory, the study of rhetoric, the study of grammar, philology and literature. So, there was uh, more in fact we say in the beginning there was uh, the onus was more on, on these areas okay, oratory, rhetoric, grammar and philology than on literature. And later on you will find uh, some, uh, some very interesting claims being made by critics on how really uh, the study um, the of, uh, of literature, okay, the study of the literature of England was not so uh, you know uh, what should I say not so core to the syllabus or syllabi in England uh, than it was when it was introduced in India for instance and more about that when you talk about the work of Gauri Vishwanathan and uh, the work uh, you know uh, for instance when we look at Macaulay's uh, minute. Okay. So, uh, so, we find that the history uh, up to the 19th century um, there were changes no doubt, but usually or you know in the beginning at least rhetoric or rhetoric and philology were more important, grammar were more important than the study of literature per se. Now, let, let us look at an early um, essay okay, uh, by J M Hart published in PMLA. PMLA is a publication of uh, the Modern Language Association. Um, in the US and it is considered one of the core uh, you know journals in, uh, in, in English literature. And this essay 1884 to 85 um, is by J M Hart and it is in uh, uh, it is entitled the college course in English literature how it may be improved. Now, the reason why I am bringing this and this I have found in uh, in Rayleigh's uh, if you remember I mentioned uh, uh, Rita Rayleigh's uh, resource in, uh, in the net that you can look up, uh, uh, the college course in English literature and how it may be improved. Now, let us read this slowly and see how you know from uh, the 19th century the whole idea of improving so to speak the college, uh, college course in or syllabi in English literature has changed over the years. So, this is J M Hart. To my way of thinking the study of English literature means the study of look at this the study of the great movement of English life and feeling. Okay. So, of look at this onus the, the great movement of English life and feeling. This kind of declaration is precisely what is you know queried, critiqued and sought to be revised okay, by this domain called English studies. right? Uh, to my way of thinking Hart says the study of English literature means the study of the great movement of only one kind the life of one people okay? that is the English. English life and feeling as it is reflected in look at this the purest prose of look at the words like great purity okay as it is reflected in the purest prose of again look at this representative men now these are the words the greatness or you know for instance these are the ideas that precisely are queried by english studies the greatness of and purity 
okay, uh, of, of, of one way of life, right, um, given by quote unquote representative men. Okay. So, those men who have led their people's sympathies, the proper object of literary study in one word is to train us to read, to grasp an author's personality in all its bearings. Particularly this, this first part of the essay is something that is extremely uh, telling when you look at how English, this, how the curricul, uh, curriculum, the syllabus uh, and the, you know the, um, and the effort to improve the syllabus is uh, finds its core claim or core so, uh, sorry to say its core argument in these kinds of feelings or sorry these kinds of uh, uh, claims that it is the study of a particular kind of way of life or people by its representative uh, men and women note of course men here okay men uh, uh, or, it, or its writers in its purest form. The rise of uh, you know a polemical way of looking at life, okay, the uh, uh, a philosophy, if you may say, of polemics, of difference, okay, of celebrating variation, that is, cultural studies, has been also. I would say uh, very important in the growth and sustenance of what we call English studies. Okay. Cultural studies is an area of um, or is, in, is a discipline that celebrates a difference that queries um, you know epistemological claims that, uh, that queries dominant narratives okay, that seeks to bring marginalized people's and narratives to the fore. Okay. So, obviously, when we query English, um, uh, you know, when we query English, um, uh, you know, the sorry, the syllabus of English language and literature, okay, culture studies becomes, uh, uh, you know, a methodological tool, okay, uh, that enables you to, uh, or that gives you the terminology uh, to query these, you know, uh, you know, essays such as these, for instance, essays like J. M. Hart's *The College Course* and how it uh, how it may be improved. So, the coming of uh, the growth of cultural studies, particularly, I would say, from uh, uh, even though you have writers uh, talking, bringing in uh, that strain of argumentation uh, before the 80s, but I would say, with from the 80s, okay, this uh, this new polemic has been. Uh, not just in English studies, this new polemic has been extremely important in bringing in a note of dissent and bringing in a note of revising the need for uh, you know uh, relooking or taking uh, sorry a new look at all established knowledge domains. Okay, so on the rise of cultural studies and uh, I did mention uh, uh, you know uh, um, I think um, Smithson and Ruff's uh, book. Right, uh, edited volume uh, English studies slash culture studies, something that you may look into, and some of the essays are what uh, uh, also forms the bulk of this lecture. Um, may, uh, I, uh, I mentioned uh, Gauri Vishwanathan, whose uh, you know uh, masks of conquest based on her doctoral thesis uh, is again uh, another important work that uh, one uses to. Uh, you know, to to analyze uh, you know the English education in colonial India. Okay, and, and and listen to this carefully. Let's read from her text, Masks of Conquest, and I shall explain it in a while. The amazingly young history of English literature as a subject of study. Okay, it's surprisingly it's a uh, English the study of English literature as a subject that is in universities and colleges. This is something that we had mentioned just uh, a while ago, and she calls it this amazingly young history, which means that the study of English literature as part of the syllabus, uh, even in Britain, was uh, is relate relatively where uh, relatively it, ha it has a relatively young history. Okay, it is less than 150 years old. Is this amazing young history is frequently noted, but less appreciated is another aspect of it. And what is it? Less appreciated is the irony that English literature 
appeared and this is what as I said is the stunning claim that English literature appeared as a subject in the curriculum of the colonies long before it was institutionalized in the home country. So, studying you know English, uh, English literature as part of the curriculum was something that happened in the colonies and if it uh, sorry happened in the colonies then uh, one has to look for the reasons as to why such a phenomenon would occur at all, why the study of one country's or one nation's literature okay, uh, its um, formal study or as part of formal education begins elsewhere and not in its own land. Okay. So, this is um, uh, a core issue that is taken up by uh, Vishwanathan. Let me read it again. The amazingly young history of English literature as a subject of study is frequently noted, but less appreciated is the irony that English literature appeared as a subject in the curriculum of the colonies long before it was institutionalized in the home country that is England. Further she says, when the classical curriculum still reigned supreme in England, despite the strenuous efforts of some concerned critics to loosen its hold, English as the study of culture and not simply the study of language, look at this, English as the study of culture, okay. here culture means way of life okay, or ways of life fine. So, English as a study of culture and not simply a question of philology or of grammar or of rhetoric right. Uh, English as a study of culture and not simply as a study of the English language had already found a secure place in the British Indian curriculum. Okay. So, the change happens not in the home country okay, and it says here the when the classical curriculum still reigns supreme in England right. Uh, the change however, happened in, um, in uh, uh, British Indian curriculum. Further, the circumstances of its ascendancy are what this book is immediately concerned with that is masks of con conquest is, is it is its prime concern um, is on this particular phenomenon that is British Indian curriculum or curricula in India and the very interesting and important say political phenomenon of uh, you know beginning to teach or include um, English literary texts in and uh, in education in India. And this book also simultaneously draws attention to the subsequent in, look at this word institutionalization and ideological content of the discipline in England as it developed in the colonial context. Do you follow? Okay, this is what really we call a contrapuntal method, perhaps I can use the word here looking at it parallelly. Uh, the growth of um, English, uh, the establishment or the introduction and, its and subsequent establishment of English um, literary studies in colonial India and of course, the changes that took place in the discipline in England in the home country as it began to develop in the colonial context. So, this is this this kind of thing uh, is, is you know, this, this kind of analysis is heartily welcomed by English studies. Fine, again going back to uh, English studies slash culture studies by edited by uh, Smithson and Ruff. Uh, you find that in uh, you know they too talk about uh, not just uh, a language okay that is english not uh, just a literary text but they say that english studies particularly as it is informed by culture studies okay needs to look at the interrelationship between or among different domains which have perhaps been perhaps hitherto been looked at or uh, sort of in an insular sort of way Okay, uh, in a discrete sort of way. Okay. So, the coming in of English uh, um, studies uh, uh, following the cultural studies uh, you know uh, uh, um, impact or influence is that we now study uh, the relations among diverse aspects or 
facets that is the relations between language, the text, cultures, readers and writers. So, this is really a whole circ, uh, you know, whole circuit here you find in which all these are related to uh, one another in different ways. Okay? So, you do not study the English language without looking at the cultures under which such a language develop right or the variations or the changes over the years historical changes develop. Okay? You do not look at uh, the text without looking at the positionality and the condition of the reader, the historical, cultural, socio-economic condition of the reader. Do you understand? Okay? So, it is safe to say here that hitherto discrete for instance philology, okay, uh, rhetoric, literature, these were more or less taught in a discrete manner in a in an insular manner. Right? Now, becomes okay, because again remember because of um, uh, because of the the, the uh, ideology of cultural studies begins to be looked at in a more interdisciplinary and a more related manner. Okay? These are all correlated. So, uh, again put they they have put it so beautiful they said it is not only about content the study English studies is not just about content it is also about contests right it is about contests it is about dissent right it is about revision okay not just that uh, content of a course or a syllabus has been established and you do not question it over the years okay and it is important that changes are brought because primarily because of ideological dissent and the need to revise it right that's uh, that's say you know um, dismantling the canon and to make the newer canons uh, smithson and ruff put it as as this they call it english studies disputes okay english studies revises it transforms what hitherto established methods, principles, theories and the scope of studying English language and literature. Okay? So, look at these words disputing, revising, transforming all these things the methods, principles, theories and scope of what it means to be said and that is why uh, you know apart from the capaciousness uh, of, uh, of um, um, English studies, we also note its dynamism. Okay? So, it is uh, you know uh, it is it is so dynamic that it it keeps you know it sort of makes the uh, uh, makes the traditional English language and literature uh, titles seem to be really you know uh, devoid devoid of any such exciting uh, sort of changes that have taken place and that are being brought uh, you know. Uh, brought about by English studies. Right? So, Smithson and Ruff says disputing, revising and transforming these are some of the important activities in English studies. So, uh, therefore, British uh, literature, American literature, okay, world literatures in English okay, that is a literature that has been written in English. Uh, in different by writers in different um, parts of the world and of course, the, impo the, the whole question of translation translations from English and uh, from English uh, uh, and to English to the English language. Okay, these are then some of the primary concerns uh, of, um, uh, of English studies and uh, to this I may add it is related to the whole topic of world literature the, the whole idea of comparative literature. Okay the whole idea of comparative literature today sees a huge resurgence, a huge interest and this is also because of the fact that English studies as a domain has been able to incorporate okay, the comparative analyses of literature uh, through particularly through translation and the um, recognition of world literature okay, as something that is worthy of being. Um, incorporated into syllabi. Then another aspect of English studies is its global dissemination. This is something uh, that um, uh, uh, that has been recognized by there are so many I mean I, I have uh, we have lectures on for instance global English, 
lectures on uh, international English in, in this uh, very module itself, international English, global English, the alchemy of English. I mean, you can look up uh, for this whole, whole uh, um, the study of global dissemination of English. You can look up the work of say Braj Kachru for instance, I mean, uh, there are several lectures here in this module, this, but suffice it for us here to say that the, the, the means, okay, the aims, the strategies, the politics okay, behind the global dissemination of both English language and literature. Okay. For instance, um, American English and how it has um, kind of how, how different it is uh, or how it is different from sorry for how it is different from uh, uh, the so called standard English, Indian English for instance. Then uh, the um, uh, you know the, the use of English in global trade situations, in global economic situations, the use of English in, in a global so called globalized world, these are some of the areas also are that had the, sorry also that have been taken up in this, um, this particular uh, you know sub branch if I may use the word of English studies. Uh, the study of English as I mentioned earlier for special purposes, English as second language etcetera. Okay. Fine. So, let me next take you to uh, another uh, essay, quickly look at Franklin Court's uh, introduction in the book Institutionalizing English Literature, Culture and Politics of Literary Studies 1750 to 1900. I mean look at the world, you know they, they if these are words that will keep coming up over and over again. The whole issue of how English, um, the study of English literature is institutionalized. It, these are not, uh, these are not decisions that are uh, devoid of, uh, devoid of politics, they are not decisions that are devoid of uh, economics. Okay. Uh, the, the hence he calls it the culture and politics of literary study and let us read from this. The historical development of English literary study in Britain and the United States is different. Now, we talked about you know through Gauri Vishwanathan's marks of conquest, we talk about we talked about uh, in English in uh, you know uh, sorry English literature study in institu institutionalized in India. Uh, court refers to the difference in uh, you could say motivation for instance, uh, as far as English literary study is concerned uh, the difference between that in England and in, uh, in America. Let us read this, the historical development of English literary study in Britain and the United States is different. The inherently class conscious, look at this, the inherently class conscious and racially ethnic character of British education produce a discipline far more explicitly concerned with social and ethnographical issues than its American counterpart. Look at this very carefully. Okay. Uh, court claims that the, you know, the study of English literature in England, uh, it is you know, uh, its impulse, so to speak, okay, its motivation, if you will, uh, rests on the important issue of class, okay, of class consciousness in lit in literature, okay, and the racially ethnic character of British education, right? Uh, the therefore the discipline called English literary study, right, uh, becomes more ethnographically and socially motivated okay, or uh, the approach is more social uh, you know based on this, uh, on issues sociological or social and ethnographic right. And then he contrasts this uh, with the study of English literature in America and he says let us look for uh, uh, look for the answer here. He says the wars for legitimating the, the study in the United States were fought primarily in institutions for higher learning. Okay. So, uh, the impulse is on what uh, you know historically on what institutions look for, right. The changes happen not so much uh, with re regard to you know to social 
uh, for instance issues of social stratification or issues of race for instance in the United States not so much that at least directly <coughs> as compared to England, but to, due to some you know due to some institutional needs. Let us look at this again the wars for legitimating the study in the United States were fought primarily in institutions for higher learning making the formative years of English literary study here see more of a cultural hybrid look at this this is class conscious and racially ethnic right. On the other hand here the at least in the form, formative years the impulse was towards cultural hybridity fine uh, more of a cultural hybrid a blend of American curricular experimentation look at this word curricular experimentation and contrast it to what happens in England. A blend of American curric curricular experimentation with the distant, but established authority of English intellectual tradition. So, this whole question of revising happens here, okay? Re question of revising uh, 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 even if it is with a view to you know uh, view to the necessity so to speak of encouraging cultural hybridity of recognizing different uh, you know different ethnic um, uh, ethnic groups or, or you know and races and uh, for instance Ameri African American writing for instance of Hispanic writing for instance. So, there is this uh, um, there is this what should I say maybe I can use the word this desire for cultural hybridity that that at least in the formative years okay. Uh, was an imp important impulse in uh, you know in revising what he calls here the the already established authority of the English tradition in the intellectual tradition. Okay. By contrast let us read the by contrast the rise of English studies in Britain is more clearly implicated in examinations of its political and social history. Okay. So, this is a, an extremely important to me an extremely important insight that is given to us by Franklin court. Okay. So, the different the difference in, in impulse and motivation in uh, you know uh, in, in the institutionalization okay, of uh, English literary studies in the home country and uh, you know in um, the second home country uh, in, the, in the United States. right? So, uh, uh, I am referring again to one such important uh, person an important one such important figure in this whole, in this whole in you know um, as I said the hybrid uh, the hybridity impulse uh, the cultural impulse. In fact, the word culture studies was coined by her uh, and she is Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak uh, many of you have heard of her and in her book in other worlds uh, published in 1987 this is what she she says. Okay. I am attempting to suggest our pedagogic responsibility in this situation. Okay. So, they, they, uh, the scholars during those, those times took it upon us as a responsibility in you know in teaching and devising and revising curricula okay, in forming uh, you know uh, and reformulating the canons for instance. So, she says she says I am in during that time you know historically if you look at it this is what they felt and as been uh, articulated by Spivak. I am attempting to suggest our pedagogic responsibility in this situation to ask not merely how English how literary studies more correctly look at this. Now, you understand this okay? Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak as uh, a faculty in an American uh, university definitely referring to the institutionalization Okay, of literary study uh, as an as a universitarian discipline, okay, as something happening in the university. And you look at what court says here, right? Okay, the was for, for legitimating the study of the uh, of uh, uh, English literature in the United States were fought primarily in institutions of higher learning, that is the university. Okay, and here is Pivok saying, agreeing that you know uh, she and other uh, such faculty okay, recognized the importance of taking up this, uh, this pedagogical responsibility uh, to ask merely uh, to ask not merely how literary studies 
or the university discipline of English studies can adjust to social demands, but also how we could by change look at this by change this is the revision that happens in the US by changing some of our assumptions contribute towards changing those demands in the long run. So, the university curriculum is seen by Spivok and uh, uh, you know the, the people who are revising uh, you know uh, the, uh, the curriculum there was seen as a very important uh, you know it is not that you wait for social change and that sort of reflex begins to so slowly seep into the university, but today it is seen as a responsibility. So, she, she says here by changing some of our assumptions contribute towards changing those demands in the long run. So, there is a even a proactive I may use the word a proactive uh, role that is sought by institute says what code calls the institutions of higher learning in the United States okay, towards social change. Okay. Then uh, finally, Macaulay's minute on Indian education and I will briefly touch upon this, because this is something that uh, will be um, uh, you know uh, core to another lecture, which is the last lecture in module 2. Module 2 as you know is devoted to uh, the history of the English uh, language and that module ends with a lecture on English in India okay, historically okay, uh, the introduction and the growth development um, of English uh, both language and literature in India. Uh, I will end today's lecture by a brief um, uh, you know a reference to Macaulay's minute on Indian education uh, and and which is symptomatic really of uh, the colonialist enterprise as far as uh, introducing Eng English language and literature was concerned. Okay. So, this is Macaulay uh, in his minute, we have to educate a people who cannot at present be educated by means of their mother tongue. We must teach them some foreign language. The claims of our own language is it is hardly necessary to recapitulate is talking about the English language, it stands preeminent even among the languages of the West. It abounds with works of imagination not inferior to the noblest, which Greece has bequeathed to us with models of every species of eloquence, with historical compositions, which considered merely as narratives have seldom been surpassed and which considered look at this as vehicles of ethical and political instruction have never been equaled. So, in this whole celebration of the English language okay, uh, you know which uh, the, 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 the uh, high claims being made by Macaulay even as he is doing that in his minute, he also at least in the end of this passage as uh, is seen. He talks about you know the fact that even as a political tool okay, uh, or tool for politics and ethics of morals okay, the English language according to him is unsurpassed and unequaled. And in, in uh, the lecture on English in India we shall see how this was used or uh, English was English Eng uh, uh, you know and English literature okay, the, the introduction of English literature in, uh, the Indian, uh, in India during the colonial times was uh, was a political move and um, uh, this is also something that is mentioned by Macaulay in his minute. I have more slides on the minute which I will not use now and I will save it for um, that lecture in the second module. And uh, we uh, do not have much time really and I will quickly do a recap by way you know uh, 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 recap of this lecture by, by raising you know or letting you know of some of the ways in which you may have questions about uh, you know questions may be formulated in your exams. Okay. For instance, uh, we, what did we talk about in this lecture? It was the scope of English studies and uh, you may get a question like how is, uh, in, uh, is there any difference between English studies and English language and literature okay, that is the study of English language and literature and you would say yes. Um, uh, many consider English language and literature, the study of English language and literature as, as the title as symptomatic of uh, you know a more canonized and traditional way of, uh, of studying on the subject, whereas English studies is, um, is a far more uh, you know 
uh, capacious or commodious um, uh, you know domain which includes uh, um, chiefly of course the study of of english the english uh, um, study of the english language of um, english literature but not only as something that emanates from britain okay as world literature as world literature is lit written in english Okay, uh, and of translations, right? It also includes the study of English that is used in journalism, study of the philosophy of uh, language as applied to English, study of media, of film, of communication, of cultural studies, right? Or of uh, it could be study of definitely of law, okay? Of uh, uh, publishing, of digital um, publishing, for instance, the digital world. All these and also. Uh, not the least important which is the study of ways and strategies of proficiency in the English language and we have seen uh, can you may also point to the study of, uh, of ESL or English uh, you know um, as a second language or English um, uh, uh, for special purposes right. Comparative studies of first language and second uh, language, English as a first language and second language, and finally, the global whole question of the global dissemination of English, both as a language and uh, uh, as and its literary forms. Okay, so you may say that yes, definitely, scholars are more and more pressing uh, uh, that English studies. Uh, be the title that is that uh, and to replace English language and literature, though we still have keep uh, you know uh, title our entire course English language and literature, uh, because we are not talking about for instance we do not have modules on the proficiency of uh, uh, you know learning uh, teaching and learning English. Okay, this is something which is missing from our course syllabus and been taken up by other courses in NPTEL. Right. Uh, it is not that we are not aware of this, but we finally chose to call it um, English um, language and literature because, see, for instance, we have modules on uh, the history of English, and in the module of the history of English language, uh, we are uh, focusing uh, up apart from the fact that we have English in India, lecture on English in India, we are focusing on, say, the development of the English language as it happened in England. Okay. Uh, in Britain, we are not looking at that elsewhere, okay? And uh, because of that, because of this gap or lacuna, we have also, in, in you know, uh, uh, to make up for it, included lectures such as in this module, the alchemy of English or international English or the globalization of English. Okay, so uh, this is really our defense of why we, you know, in, for instance, again on the different. Uh, uh, different um, periods of English literature. We refer uh, quite traditionally, I may say, to to um, uh, to the age of Milton or, or you know the age of Shakespeare and to the, the Victorians, etc. Without talking about uh, you know the development, growth development, and different periods, if we may say, of English uh, of literature in English in other countries. Okay. So, we finally, settle for English language and literature and let me again remind you it is not because we are not aware of the importance of uh, the pedagogical and ideological importance of English studies. Okay. Then you may uh, also get a question like how or which uh, uh, discipline uh, was also responsible for creating this influence on the you know on the, from the on the ideological point of view and you refer to culture studies. Okay, the polemical strain in cultural studies leads to what uh, you know um, uh, Ruff Smithson and Ruff ha has called the revising of and then you get another may have another question get another question like for instance um, uh, what are what are the things that are uh, according to Smithson and Ruff that are disputed revised okay then it is entire the methods the principles okay uh, 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 the themes right that are there <coughs> sorry that have been existing as far as English language, study of English language and literature are concerned. Then, when you, if you uh, ask a question on, give for instance, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the irony of English literature, uh, historical irony of it, English literature, uh, uh, you know, um, as a university discipline. We say that the irony is, according to scholars like Gauri Vishwanathan, that English as a department, you know, or, or a department really, or uh, I say a discipline, uh, 
belonging to formal education taught formally as part of you know of education did not happen in the home country okay the study of english literature was almost peripheral in the english departments up to the 19th century and we have enough proof of this here in our lecture up to the 19th century where because the more important things of study of philology the study of um, uh, the study of grammar the study of rhetoric and oratory it was only <coughs> in in uh, the colonies and in india we see english literature being used as a political tool which we found in <coughs> sorry uh, we'll find in macaulay's minute right so uh, here we come to the end of our lecture on the scope of english studies um, and um, uh, you may wait for other lectures that are there which will throw more light on this scope <coughs> sorry i have only outlined the scope here so let us uh, uh, end uh, this lecture here with the promise that more of this for instance especially if you are interested in English in India be taken up in module number 2. Thank you so much.